Hey guys, it was so funny. Uh, yesterday, let me just move it. we go now I can see you guys yesterday um I preached on the invasion but what you don't know um, um, is after after I I went to uh, church online I preached a whole other sermon <laughs> a whole part two to that message and at the end of preaching for about 15 or 20 minutes I realized that the camera wasn't on um, so that shows you you can put forth everything you have into whatever God has um, purposed in you to do but if you're not turned on to, to it really or if you're doing it haphazardly it's still not not worth as much as if like as much as it would be as if you threw your whole self at it and if you would turn the camera on so today I'm kind of going to uh, summarize that sermon yesterday I was after I preached the invasion um, you can go back and watch it after I preached the invasion I said okay Lord how do we how do we get there like I'm like you want the church um, to experience you in a new way you want to invade people's lives but we're not letting you I'm like how do we um, do we make ourselves ready for this invasion and he said to me it all starts with relationship um, the Lord um, wants a real genuine heartfelt relationship with you and this relationship is more than a prayer in the morning and in the night with the kids he wants to be forgive me for saying this all up in your business he wants to have a say in everything in your life and he wants to once he can invade the quote-unquote little things in your life or or have the final say in the little things in your life um that's when he will graduate to bigger things and to bigger things and you're like uh rachel that's all well and good but how do i start it's very simple not very simple i'm over simplifying it probably but you start with having a grasp um of his written word uh, of the Bible because he he will speak nothing that 
doesn't have at least a little hint in his word. He wants to speak new things that he's never spoken before, but at the same time, he wants people to know at least a little bit about his written word to so that they know that he is speaking um because he god never changes jesus never changes but his methods from from bringing the word to his people do but if we want new methods we have to go back to basics which which is the scripture yesterday i talked about joshua and how joshua uh took territory he slaughtered those things that god told those people that god told him to slaughter and and you would think oh my gosh that's terrible but it was the voice of god that joshua heard that caused him to just go on after moses died um so the first thing to invasion is getting to know the word of god when you um can get to know the word of god then you will understand the voice of god and the voice of god can come in several different ways it doesn't have to be like this big Charleston Heston like voice the voice of God can come in a whisper the voice of God can come through song the voice of God can come through whatever he's whatever um whatever is in you that he can use cuz what i what i learned was about God was he'll use whatever he can to speak to you he will go to literal hell and back for you he loves you that much so if you like sports he'll speak to you during a basketball game um if you are into music he will speak to you during a song um it was one of the hardest times in my life um a few years ago about 10 years ago and somebody who i really admired said something that that destroyed me destroyed my confidence destroyed my self esteem everything just totally destroyed me and this person was in leadership at the church i was attending at the time so i was destroyed i didn't want anything to do with worship or or church or worship music it this was not the problem it it was not a problem with god and me i still love god I know that God wasn't people I wasn't mad at God but the whole worship um music thing I was so mad at the church and the um I was so I shouldn't say mad so disappointed at the church that the thought of listening to any worship music turned me right off um 
so at that time, because I loved music still, I was listening to a lot of secular music. And um, there was a song by Brian McKnight, his first single ever. It's called One Last Cry. And that song ministered to me so much because it made me realize that I wasn't alone and that, that it was okay to be hurt, that it was okay to hurt. And I, and I know, and I know for many people, they say, well, secular music can't minister. But in my experience, God will use anything that he wants to to get to you. So if it's secular music, he'll use it. If it's sports, he'll use it. If it's languages, he'll use it. He will use anything to get his word across to you. And that's what he did for me. And in that time, I I just felt so comforted by that song because I felt that like the girl he was t- that um, Brian McKnight was talking about was actually the ch- the church, and I felt so comforted. Um, another song during that time that was. Another song during that time that was um, really, really influential in my life was um, Tonight I Want to Cry by Keith Urban, who is a country singer, for those of you who don't know. That song also, also ministered to me. So, God will use anything uh, that that He can to minister to you. So, this invasion starts with knowing the Word of God, knowing the voice of God, and then when you get familiar with the voice of God, you would know how to respond and how to um, how to move and that's where he will be able to invade your life um, because you'll know you'll you'll get a sense of how he's speaking if he's speaking, what he's saying um, because you will have spent time with him and the key to hearing God's voice you can hear all kinds of sermons about this and all kinds of people have different opinions but my opinion is it's just time it's just um, spending time with God and getting to know how he flows through you getting to know um, how you communicate with him as well. Um, and his, his word never changes, but his methods do. And his methods could change in your life as well. So he wants you to, in order to invade your life, he wants to get in a real relationship with you. That's how he will invade your life and that's how he will invade the church because if we all get into our own individual relationship with Christ and we all know how he speaks to us and we we know how he move we understand what how he's telling us to move 
then we will be a strong church. And that is how we will build the church. And that is how we'll foster the takeover that I was talking about yesterday. So guys, thank you so much for listening to me and uh, supporting me. Thank you so much for your comments and your support. I really, really appreciate it. All the comments and all the support. Even when my videos don't get a lot of play, I really appreciate it. Every one person, every person that comes, because for me, it's not about the quantity of the videos, it's the quality, and if I can affect one person's life with what God has given me, that's, that's everything to me. And usually... I don't talk or teach anything that that I'm not learning myself. So I'm the first student of this stuff. And I pass it on to you what God has been showing me or what God has been teaching me. So have a good evening, you guys. Take care. Bye. Oh, and a relationship with God is different than salvation. Salvation is the free gift that God gives to anyone who asks. A relationship is the time and attention and prioritization that you give to God and how much you know him and how much you spend time with him. That's a relationship with God. So there are many saved people that are going to heaven that that do not have a relationship with God. And he like and he wants everyone to have a relationship with him. He wants everyone to be saved and go to heaven and have eternal life, yes. But he also wants people to have a real downtown relationship with him. A relationship where he's in every part of your life. A relationship where you don't have to hide anything from from anyone. So he wants not just salvation for your life, but he wants a relationship with you. He wants to relate with you. He wants to sit with you. He wants to do your taxes. He wants to do all that stuff. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. I bless you. I give you praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. And it said I was live, so I think it recorded, unlike yesterday. Bye. Oh, yes, and he wanted me to say, for all of those of you who have given, who have sown, who have taught, who have um, put into children, who have done whatever you can for the kingdom, keep going, keep sowing, keep giving, keep doing what you're doing, because those actions are part of his invasion of your life. Don't don't quit. It doesn't matter who is watching your videos. It doesn't matter who is not watching them. The, the point is that you're doing it for his purpose, not, not yours or for anyone else's. 
you're doing them, you're preaching, you're singing, you're doing whatever ministry that you are doing for his purpose, no one else's, and he will reward you. And he will, he will send the people that you need to further his purpose. If you, if you need a, a certain person, he will send that person. If you need a certain thing, he will send that thing. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're thinking that nobody's seeing, but he's seeing. And he loves you, and he's loving what you're doing. He's loving the fact that you're sowing into those children. He's loving that you are, um, that you are just totally, um, that you are sowing, that you are sowing time, that you you are sowing your wealth of knowledge. He's loving that. He's loving that you're smiling, even though things may not be be the way you want them. He's loving that you are just kind to people. He's loving that you, that you through this pandemic, have kept praising him and have, have kept worshiping, have kept going to church online. He's loving all that. And he's saying, you won't be alone forever. You won't be alone forever. And he said, your core is coming. It may feel lonely with you just raising those kids all by yourself, no support, but your core is coming. Just wait. And for some of you, your core will be revealed. For some of you, for some of you, your core is a, around right now. And you don't know it, but, but God is about to reveal it. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you guys so much. Bye. All that I have made, I laid down. Everything I hold here, my many crowns, you that is part of me, you that is part of me, spirit. You will not break. Don't quit. I know you feel like quitting, but don't quit. I know you feel like stopping whatever you're doing, but don't. I know you feel like just letting the kids go to school without um, talking to them the way you do, but don't. You might think they're not listening, but they are. I know you think about stopping to make those videos that you're making, those cooking videos, those financial videos, those preaching videos, but don't, don't quit, don't stop, because God is about to do something with that. You've been doing this for years with nobody noticing, nobody doing anything, but the Lord sees it. He will reward you in due season. And he's saying, do season, do season for some of you is right around the corner. And do season for others of you is now. He's saying, receive it now. Receive it now. Don't wait for anyone to recognize you. Receive your due season. Re receive your God giving, given triple blessing. In the name of Jesus, thanks.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Spirit, oh, open up heaven's door. We're waiting with worship on. You're the only love that satisfies me. So we run into your loving arms. Yes, we're safe and secure in your love. You're the only love that satisfies me. Leave me astounded. Leave me amazed. Show up your glory. Let heaven invade. We're waiting with worship. We're waiting with praise. For the almighty presence I've got to invade. Thank you guys. Have a good evening. Start small and start slow. If you're kind of intimidated, just start small and start slow. And you may seem so stupid to yourself, but you're, if you talk alone in the room, but trust me, it gets easier. But just start somewhere. The Spirit is saying, Start somewhere. Start somewhere. For him to invade your life, you need to start somewhere. An invasion doesn't start with a big thing. It starts with a little plan. Um, soldiers and uh, people in leadership, when they consider, consider invading a country, they start with little steps. They start with little steps. They don't start with a big thing. Don't start with a big thing. Don't don't bite off more than you can chew. Start small and be authentic. The Lord is saying, be authentic. Don't try and pray like the pe uh, people you see. Don't try and be Bishop Jakes. Be you. Be you. God knows who you are. And don't fear authenticity. A lot of people in their Christian lives fear authenticity. But what I'm learning is he knows me anyway, so why not just be myself? For too long in the, in the body of Christ, we haven't been ourselves. We've hidden our true motives. We've, we've hidden behind the facade and he said just to not fear authenticity a lot of people are not authentic because they don't think it's spiritual enough god doesn't want you to be spirit uh to be spiritual in that way he wants you to be authentic he wants you to have um an attitude, a posture of spirituality more than an act of spirituality, a posture and a presence of spirituality. He wants your spirituality not to be in your words, but in your actions, in your movement, how you treat people, how you are with people. And that and saying, hey man, or hey girl, does not make you less spiritual than saying, 
in the bless you sister bless you brother those are just words spirituality is not words spirituality is a is a lifestyle christianity uh worship and all of that is a lifestyle it has nothing to do with the words you use so be authentic and don't fear authenticity in your relationship with God it's so freeing when I realized I can just be myself I can just be my quick crazy quirky self and anything I need to change he'll help me change and anything I need to do he'll let me know it's so freeing when you embrace the fullness of God in your life it's just really awesome so third and final closing you can tell i'm a real um i'm a real preacher we have several closings (laughs) um but yeah have a good night see y'all later